Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. Today we're going to talk about secondary amenorrhea. We're going to try this video a little bit differently just because it lent itself well to more of an algorithm than a discussion of uh, diagnosis, treatment, etc. So the first thing we do when we uh, find somebody uh, has secondary amenorrhea is run a beta-HCG test because uh, pregnancy is still the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea. After we confirm that somebody's not pregnant, uh, we get a TSH and a prolactin. So uh, if you have a, um, a positive beta HCG, you're pregnant, uh, high TSH, you're hypothyroid, and um, high prolactin, that could indicate any, any kind of prolactinemia, like a prolactinoma or drug-induced cause and some thyroid causes also are associated with high prolactin. If, uh, if those don't yield anything for you, then the next test we're going to do is a progestin challenge. So this we're basically testing the endometrial lining to see if it will uh, respond to progestins. So if, uh, if we have bleeding after a progestin challenge, then it's more likely to be uh, PCOS or idiopathic anovulation. And if you get that kind of a result, then you might uh, check for other things like virilization. If you see virilization, uh, you run testosterone, DHES, 17-hydroxyprogesterone. Uh, 17, 17 and that can lead you to some of the other causes of, of secondary amenorrhea as well. Um, for example, uh, uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia or Cushing syndrome are also possibilities there. So, and if you don't get any bleeding after a progestin challenge, then the next test is an FSH test. So if your FSH is high, um, then you uh, probably have some kind of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, which basically means that you're making uh, gonadotropic hormones like FSH, but your gonads aren't responding. Uh, so you're not getting the uh, estrogen production from the gonads uh, for, or from the ovaries. If you have a low FSH um, associated with a, uh, a negative um, progestin challenge test, then we run the cyclic estrogen uh, progesterone test. And if we get bleeding here, then we're more likely to have a hypogonadotrop hypogonadotropic hypogonadism where we have low uh, gonadotropic hormones like FSH, LH, and low uh, 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 sex hormones like estrogen. If, uh, if you don't get any bleeding from the cyclic estrogen progesterone test, then there's something wrong uh, with the endometrium itself or some kind of anatom anatomical problem. Um, Asherman syndrome might present this way or uh, various uterine abnormalities. So please let us know if, uh, if this format uh, works for you or if, uh, if we should stick with the other format um, but, uh, or if there's any changes that we need to make to this, this video. Thank you.